We would now like to start the presentation by the rail systems. It will be done by Vice President and Executive Officer in charge of rail systems business, Mr. Alistair Dormer. This will be done in English, so please use the receiver if you need to. So, watashi no nihongo wa. My Japanese is not good yet, so I would like to speak in English. Thank you for your understanding. So to start with, let me please introduce uh, our railway team. So we have uh, Mr. Mitsudomi, who is our Chief Strategy Officer for the Global Business. Uh, Mr. Masai, CEO of Rail Systems Company and Global COO. And Mr. Yabuta, who is the Global CFO. I only have uh, 15 to 20 minutes to present to you, so I'm going to go quite quickly. But the first half will be focused on the FY14 business performance. Then the second half of my presentation will be focused on the Anseldo uh, acquisition. OK, so let's start by having a look. As a reminder of Hitachi's uh, railway business, so we have a complete portfolio of products and services from rolling stock, both in Japan and internationally, all the way through to rail control systems. So I think we have quite a comprehensive uh, offering to the marketplace. But let's move on and look at 2014 uh, performance. So I'm delighted that we've managed to exceed all of our business targets for 2014. From a revenue point of view, uh, we've managed to manage our projects very carefully and also attract additional business, uh, particularly from METO in terms of electrical components and systems. So our, our revenue is now at a very high level. From a profitability point of view, we've managed our budgets very, very carefully to exceed on our uh, target for profitability. And I'm particularly pleased with our uh, free cash flow, we've managed to attract uh, new orders uh, with a significant down payment, which has enabled us to improve on our cash performance. And we're now sitting at a, a record uh, level of order backlog, which I think the, the business is in good shape uh, to move forward in the future. So let's have a look at what we've achieved in 2015, uh, 2014. So in Japan, we've been very busy uh, with uh, Shinkansen, again delivering on a further expansion of the attack system and introducing new products in energy saving. In the United Kingdom, we have the strategically important uh, IEP program. So just to show you, uh, the, we've delivered the first uh, train sets into the UK and we're now conducting testing. So the train is now operating uh, under test conditions in both electric mode and in diesel mode. And I'm very delighted to tell you that the testing is going uh, extremely well. We have a lot more testing to do uh, over the next year or so, but so good so far. We're also constructing uh, a new manufacturing uh, facility in the UK. This is nearing completion and will be opened on time uh, in September, ready to start series manufacture uh, next year. Not just the manufacturing centre though, we've been investing heavily in uh, depots. So the maintenance uh, facilities, we have put a significant effort in this year and you can see uh, on the video uh, behind me the, the amount of effort that's gone in to produce those uh, maintenance depots. This depot is in the west of England and required significant uh, earthworks uh, and establishment of the new site. The first depot is complete, which is to the west of London. This depot to the west of England will be completed on schedule uh, later this year, and all of the remaining investment in the depot infrastructure is on time. Looking internationally, Daegu Monorail, the first monorail in Korea, has now entered uh, passenger service. And <coughs> that's what we've achieved from the project's point of view but also we've managed to attract significant new orders into the business. So the big order being in the United Kingdom, which is the second part of the Intercity Express program, but we've also managed to enter the commuter train market 
uh, in Scotland, which is strategically important for, uh, for us, uh, because these contracts also provide a long-term maintenance um, deal as part of those, those contracts. But looking internationally, sorry, could you just go back? Uh, looking internationally, uh, we've made a big effort to expand our operating base because, as we said last year, our strategy is about globalization and it's about how to improve our, uh, our access to markets. So we've been trying very, very hard in Southeast Asia and we have our first contract in Myanmar uh, for signaling and I'm confident that we will achieve a breakthrough in India uh, in the coming year. <clears throat> so our strategy really is about implementing the global organization, which we uh, implemented last year. We moved our headquarters to uh, the United Kingdom. We're transforming the business model more in terms of looking at the approach for a turnkey uh, market, and I'll come on to that a little bit more, and investing in our product range. We've invested heavily in opening new bases, so we've hired uh, new staff in India and in Singapore uh, for the access of those markets and continue to invest in our technology. The important part of that strategy is the acquisition of 40% of Anseldo SDS and 100% of Anseldo Breda. So I will come on to this uh, a little bit more at the back end of the, of the program. So let's just move forward for now. So just going back for a slightly closer view at our business performance in 2014, as I mentioned before, our revenues, um, our order intake is at a record level and we've managed to attract significant orders uh, in the last year. Our order forecast for next year is, um, is somewhat less, but this is because our order intake last year was, was three times our revenue. So uh, the nature of our business is we do tend to see uh, some peaks and some troughs uh, within order intake. So we have to manage our capacity uh, quite carefully. From a revenue point of view, we will see uh, our revenue will, will jump next year to 200 billion yen. This is exactly in line with uh, our forecast uh, of the three-year plan. And again, we will maintain all of our previously stated targets for the midterm plan, and I'm confident that we can achieve those. From a cash conversion point of view, uh, our performance will improve, um, is improving significantly. So the Intercity Express program is, unfortunately, uh, whilst it is a fantastic program for us, we don't see a, a cash positive situation until 2017. So to manage this, we've been uh, implementing a VMI strategy, so a vendor managed inventory, and we've been looking to attract very high quality uh, contracts with positive cash flow uh, attached to those contracts, we've, which we've managed to do. So I think we will see the trend of, of uh, cash conversion improving uh, over the next few years. Equally with our SG&A, we've been managing our costs very carefully whilst we have a significant expansion uh, in the UK in terms of number of headcounts. We will go from where we are today, which is around 350 people, up to 1,700 uh, in the next three years. This is associated with manufacturing and with, with maintenance. So we've invested in putting the infrastructure in place for the training of those people and the resources and processes. So again, our SG&A uh, will improve and we've managed to improve on our, uh, on our gross margin by very careful management of our costs and our budgets. So looking at this a slightly different way, I think the important thing to note on this uh, is the, um, the orange bubbles you see there is that in 2015, 62% of our business is outside of Japan. So this is the first time that rail systems business has gone over the 50% threshold. Obviously, the acquisition of the Ansaldo companies will see a much further drive into international markets, but I must say that the Japanese domestic market is still fundamental to the success of the business and is still an extremely important market for us. So our financial targets, 
Um, as I said before, no change. So 200 billion yen and 7.5% operating uh, margin for next year. Um, under I IFRS, uh, we have a slightly different, uh, slightly higher target. This is due to the accounting treatment, in particular, of some uh, pension uh, liabilities, but there's no, no difference in the underlying business itself. So the market environment, uh, just to touch on this, the macro um, indicators in the market, such as environmental concern, um, population increase, urbanization, continue in support of rail. The market itself, uh, from the figures you see here, are from uh, UNIFE, which is the Config Confederation of uh, Railway Industry Manufacturers, are seeing growth, but we're seeing targeted growth from our, our own standpoint in the markets where we're most, most active. So in particular, the UK and Southeast Asia, we are seeing significant growth at this moment in time. From a, a competitive standpoint, we see a lot of movement in the market. So over the last couple of years, we've seen uh, Siemens acquire uh, Invensys. We've seen GE acquire Alstom's uh, power business. And late last year, we saw the uh, combination of the two major players uh, in China, creating uh, a very, very large uh, company in China, which at this moment in time is focused on the Chinese domestic market, but in the future will obviously look to expand. We have the big three uh, operations uh, in Europe, and the combination of Hitachi and Anseldo puts us much closer to the big three, but we have a balance in our market between Asia and Europe, which I think gives us uh, the ability to leverage uh, further growth. Um, the market itself is, is changing, uh, particularly in emerging markets, we're seeing a trend towards total solutions. So uh, companies with the capability to manage and project manage a completely uh, new railway system. This means the integration of signaling and rolling stock and, and other systems, uh, which our strategy is pushing us very much towards. But also, there is the integration with IT. So the Internet of Things and the connectivity of rolling stock to infrastructure, uh, ticketing systems to handheld uh, devices. So again, this is an area where the combination of Itachi's IT capability our railway capability and Seldon's capability puts us together into the right place. So focusing on the acquisition uh, of Anseldo Breda and 40% uh, of Anseldo SDS, I, I should mention here that we are buying Anseldo Breda Newco. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware Anseldo Breda uh, in, in the uh, recent history has had a number of uh, difficult uh, contracts. Uh, loss-making contracts, we were very careful in the negotiation to exclude those contracts from the tr uh, transaction, so they will remain uh, the responsibility of Fimicanica, and also for their current contracts, uh, we were very careful to negotiate a whole series of uh, warranties around the performance uh, of the business to cover any unexpected uh, situations in those contracts. But we have seen a uh, significant improvement in Ansel de Breda's uh, business over the last three years. And I will come on to that more. Ansel de SDS, as we, are, we will acquire 40% uh, stake in Ansel de SDS, under Italian law, we are required to launch a tender offer uh, for the remaining shares, uh, which we will conduct after the closing uh, in the second half of the year, and it is our intention to, uh, to acquire those shares. So Anseldo SDS is a, a truly international company and has two main areas of business. One is in the project management of um, mega projects or turnkey solutions. They already have a, a, a very good track record in delivery of these turnkey projects, and they have a number of ongoing projects, such as uh, Honolulu, uh, Lima, and 
Copenhagen. And there is a lot of potential, I believe, for this type of business in the future. They also have a very complementary uh, signaling technology, which is to European standards, whereas Hitachi is very strong to Japanese standards. So I think the combination of this technology, uh, which traditionally has been, uh, which has outperformed uh, rolling stock in terms of profitability, and, and Saldo SDS has a very good track record in the providing of uh, signaling solutions. And Saldo Breda has a complementary uh, rolling stock portfolio. So Atachi, as you know, have uh, a very strong portfolio in the Japanese market. In the international markets, we have commuter products and intercity products. And Saldo Breda um, has two main product ranges at this moment in time. The ETR 1000, which is a joint venture with Bombardier for very high speed. That program is on time. The product quality is very good and will enter a passenger service next week in Italy. But the majority of their work is with the uh, mass transit uh, commuter uh, type vehicle. This is a standard design. So the standard design has been used for Milan and will be used for uh, Miami, Honolulu, uh, and uh, Lima. And we see a lot of potential for this type of product in emerging markets. So the acquisition fits within our strategy. So we want to expand our, our customer base. The market itself is consolidating, uh, as we've seen through the major moves. And therefore, I think for Itachi, we need, to, uh, we need to act decisively, we need to act quickly to take the right opportunity when it came along. And I think there is a very good fit between the product ranges both in Anseldo SDS and Anseldo Breda and with Itachi. We don't see a significant overlap between uh, the two businesses. So looking at this uh, geographically, um, Hitachi very strong in Japan, and we have a, a growing presence uh, in the United Kingdom, whereas Anseldo SDS has a strong presence not only in Italy, but also in France, in the US, and in, and in Australia, and a growing uh, presence in India. And they have a lot of uh, sales offices around the world as they seek to attract um, new orders. So the balance between Hitachi, Anseldo SDS, and Anseldo Breda gives us a, a much better, so the, um, the pie chart to the right-hand side there, you can see a much better balance of um, market access that we have following this transaction. We also need uh, more capacity as we grow. So with Anseldo Breda, we will acquire uh, three sites, a Pistoria in Tuscany, Naples and Reggio Calabria uh, in the south of Italy. The fourth site, uh, which was Palermo, which was in Sicily, was excluded from the transaction and has been retained by uh, Fimicanica. And, and Saldo SDS has a manufacturing capability in Italy, in France, and in the US. So this, in addition to the growth of our uh, of Itachi's business and the opening of our new factory in the UK gives us a very complementary um, manufacturing capability. And from a people point of view, you can see from this chart that Anseldo SDS has a, a worldwide network of uh, sales offices, which can be integrated with uh, Hitachi's uh, global reach. But from a headcount point of view, you can see there's very little overlap between the headcount in both of the Anseldo companies and with um, Hitachi. From a product point of view, again, uh, from the systems, so traffic management systems, signaling systems, um, ERTMS, and the turnkey approach, again, we see very little overlap between the two, uh, the two uh, companies. And from a rolling stock point of view, the addition of Anseldo Breda's uh, metro capability and their tram stroke uh, streetcar capability is very complementary to the Hitachi product range. Now, I understand 
you probably have lots of questions in terms of what is the synergy, uh, how are you going to deliver the synergy uh, on this, um, this opportunity. As you're aware, we will be going through a tender offer phase uh, for the, uh, the remaining shares in Anseldo SDS after we close the transaction. So it is a little bit sensitive for us to, uh, to give you too much information at this moment in time. But what I can say is that this investment has been rigorously assessed by the board of Itachi Limited uh, on a number of different occasions and has passed all of the uh, internal investment criteria. So what does this do for the, for the companies? Well, for Itachi, it pushes us further into the, the fully integrated offer um, area. But also for Anseldo SDS, it takes Anseldo SDS from the, uh, the bottom right of this, of this chart all the way up into the full integrator, uh, integrator area. I think for Anseldo SDS, the long-term strategy for them is very, very difficult for them to survive without a full capability. So this is the right move for Anseldo SDS to join with Itachi. And similarly for Anseldo Breda, joining a company with the full offering, full product offering, is exactly the right move for Anseldo Breda. So this is, a, I believe, a win-win solution for all three companies. From an R&D point of view, again, there is, a, there is very little overlap between the areas that are being researched by uh, the companies. Anseldo SDS has been uh, in, in the mining sector for driverless trains. If we overlay this with Hitachi's investment in um, IT and in connectivity, I think there is a very good blend of uh, research and development that we can take going forward, but clearly this will be developed as part of our post-merger integration plan that we're currently working on. So in conclusion, 2014 uh, business performance, I believe, has been very solid because we've met all of our, our business targets. We've managed to attract very good, high-quality uh, contracts with long-term maintenance uh, associated with them. And I think the acquisition of Anseldo SDS and Anseldo Breda gives us <coughs> the platform to transform our business further to become a much stronger global player in the rail environment. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we would now like to take your questions. Uh, person at the front, at the end, please. Question. I have two questions. One is Ansaldo Breda. You explained, uh, and so I would like to, to make some clarifications on what you mentioned. So Fin Mechanica side, as you said, Fin Mechanica, the risk related to the past business and the risk for their present business will not be succeeded to Hitachi. That's how I understood your presentation. Am I correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, please. And this Fin Mechanica's real business, they disclose their numbers. Now, the number for the business that is consolidated to Hitachi is different from what Fin Mechanica has been reporting. Reporting. Is this different? So this is a forward-looking question. Will this be different from what Fin Mechanica has been disclosing, the number that you will be consolidating into Hitachi? Now, my next question is about the Italian market. In the chart that you showed us, it is flat. But the replacement cycle, renewal cycle, Uh, will there be a change in three or five years' time in the trend? So if you could share with us your forecast, please. So, so that's my big first big question. 
may I go one by one, or? I can answer. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for your questions, and uh, very good questions. Firstly, for the risk transfer, uh, you are correct. However, um, Hitachi is taking some small share of that risk. So if the risk materializes into, uh, into a significant area, then we have some incentive, clearly, to manage the risk. But the majority of the risk, uh, particularly for the high-speed contract, which we perceive to be the highest risk from a technology point of view, uh, remains with uh, Fimicanica. Um, the responsibility for the, the older contracts, such as the Danish contract, the, um, the Holland and Belgium contract, and the contract in, in Sweden for uh, trams, all of those stay with Fimicanica. Um, in terms of the numbers, so uh, I don't believe uh, Fimicanica have ever really issued uh, numbers for Ansel de Breda uh, in their annual reports, uh, but clearly that there will be a separation between Ansel de Breda Newco and Ansel de Oldco. So we will just be uh, consolidating Ansel de Newco uh, into our business. Ansel de SDS as a listed company, clearly all of the information is, uh, is available as, as a listed company. With regards to the Italian market, uh, you're right. Uh, the Italian market has been quite flat uh, over the years. But we do see the opportunity for a significant investment uh, in Italy for new rolling stock uh, in the future. They've recently announced a, a tender for 500 trains, both single deck and, and double deck uh, trains, which is being evaluated by uh, Ansel de Breda as we speak. And I think the, the measures that have been made by Prime Minister Renzi to stimulate the Italian uh, economy, to change the labor laws uh, in Italy, uh, and to modernize the Italian political system have all got considerable momentum behind them. So yes, I do see um, a good market in Italy. I wouldn't say it's, it's a huge growth area for railway, but we're not buying Ansel de Breda just for the Italian market. So, we, we are buying Ansel de Breda because the, uh, the mass transit product that Ansel de Breda has is an excellent product, particularly in, with driverless technology for emerging markets. They've already secured contracts in, um, as I mentioned before, in Lima, in Honolulu, in uh, Miami, and in Copenhagen. Uh, so I see a lot of opportunity for this kite of, type of product uh, in the future. Then my next question. <clears throat> so the railway system performance. You mentioned earlier that as for this year's plan, you feel comfortable about it. And I believe as for this uh, rail systems, you were indicating next year's plan as well. What is your uh, opinion on that? And also, if you look at the current pipeline, if you exclude Ansel Breda and SDS, with the existing Hitachi business, is there any room for upside? Do you see any situations arising where there will be upside or or do you still need to get a large order? So uh, could you explain a little bit on your current projections? I think uh, from an organic point of view, without the Ansel de Breda, Ansel de SDS uh, acquisition, um, Hitachi's rail business in a, is in a very healthy uh, condition because our backlog is very strong. This year, we've managed to attract very high quality orders uh, not just from a technical point of view, but with long-term maintenance uh, commitments as well. And we've also managed to break into emerging markets in Myanmar, and I'm sure, uh, and, and also with new technology in Singapore for CBTC, which is uh, cab-based um, signaling technology. So I think the, the business is in very good shape. It has potential for uh, continuing to grow. But really, 
if we think about this, Hitachi wants to be a very strong global player in rail, and therefore the acquisition of Ansel de Breda and Ansel de STS uh, was completely in line with our strategy. So I think the future looks good. Any other questions? So the one uh, gentleman behind. Question. I have two questions, please. First, Ansaldo Breda. Loss-making projects will not be succeeded. So the uh, Breda that you will be acquiring is a crystal clear. It is a very bright company. So uh, you will not need to scrap or eliminate the surplus facilities or things like that. It's a crystal clear company. Now, uh, you said that you will increase the headcount to 1,700 in the next three years. Now, looking at other companies' overseas production, when they increase the human resource, the training lags behind and the production lags behind. That's what I see in other companies. But what do you think about your case? What do you think will happen? Okay. Um, from an Ansaldo Breda point of view, yes, we will acquire the company debt-free. Um, we will pay uh, 36 million euros for the real estate because the real estate was previously owned by Fimicanica and leased by uh, Ansel de Breda. Um, we have no intention uh, at this moment in time to close any of the facilities. We need the capacity. Um, and Ansel de Breda for the next two years is very full in terms of um, rolling stock. Now, clearly, there are opportunities to continue to improve this company. So the application of Hitachi's quality standards and Hitachi's efficiency standards into Ansel de Breda, I think, will uh, give us the capability to improve and increase the capacity uh, of Ansel de Breda, which we need. We need to increase capacity if we want to grow um, our top line in revenue, which is what our intention is for uh, this acquisition. In terms of the increase in headcount from 350 to 1,700, um, approximately 700 of these people will be new hires for manufacturing, and 700 will be new hires for maintenance. Now, from the maintenance point of view, this, uh, this headcount will be transferred from the existing operator over to Hitachi. So they are already fully trained people who have been maintaining trains for many, many years. Clearly, they need to be trained on Hitachi product, um, but this is something we've done before uh, in the United Kingdom. From a manufacturing point of view, um, we have a, a headcount at this moment in time of around 50 people, which we will increase to around 400 people uh, by the end of the year. We have two strategies to manage this. Uh, firstly, we have um, a team in Casado that has been training for the last four years on how to teach UK staff in, um, in manufacturing uh, to Hitachi standards. And secondly, we have had a number of uh, local staff from the UK stationed in Newton Aycliffe, working alongside our, uh, sorry, stationed in Casado, working alongside Casado engineers, learning about how to uh, build um, Hitachi trains. I understand your question, because it's a very good question, because uh, this is clearly an area of, of, of risk when you're increasing uh, your manufacturing capability uh, with a new factory. But I also think we are taking a very careful step-by-step -step approach in terms of the amount of work we transfer to Newton Aycliffe. So to begin with, the level of assembly will be quite light and we will progressively increase our, <coughs> um, our uh, assembly at the right pace in order to make sure that we manage the risk very carefully. This is, Newton Aycliffe is under the control of uh, Mr. Masai, um, which is, Mr. Masai uh, has been building trains for 30 years. He knows everything about building trains. Um, 
<coughs> sorry, it's his staff's responsibility to uh, to bring these new uh, people on online. Masai san, do you have any comment to make? <laughs> As Alistair just said, we will do this in step by step fashion over a few years. We've been we've been preparing this over a few years. So it will be transferred on a stepwise manner to minimize the risk between UK and Japan. We are joining hands to prepare for this. Our time is running up, so maybe we can take one last question. So then the gentleman in yellow. Question. My name is Ibarra from Morgan Stanley. So with regards to Ansel de Breda, I think when we discussed with uh, Finn Mechanica, it, they talked about uh, they are very dependent on the customers on RFI, and that is why their profitability is very low. That was what they told me. But according to what you said, you have a lot of expectations on the Italian project. But when you talk to Siemens, they say, you know, Deutsche Bahn is probably the hardest, they say. So as, with regards to strategy going forward, what what is the percentage of uh, Italian business, Juan de Breda? What is your thinking on that? Okay, no, that's a very good question. Uh, at this moment in time, um, I don't have the exact figures, but uh, by far the majority of the work in Ansal de Breda is with the Italian customer because uh, the ETR 1000 high speed project uh, is the, the main area of manufacture uh, in Pistoria, uh, as well as double deck trains for um, both uh, Train Italia and for Train Italia North. Um, they're also manufacturing uh, metro cars for uh, Miami for Honolulu and Miami at the moment, and they will start manufacture for uh, Lima in the future. So, and so the radio will be competing for the new double deck uh, opportunity in Italy. We see the potential for more Vivalto double deck uh, trains uh, in Italy. But as I mentioned before, we're also looking wider than Italy for Anselda Breda. So there, there are a number of um, number of discussions going on at the moment about how best we utilize and how best we uh, maximize the capacity in all of our plants. We know we have a, a, a job to continue to improve Ansel de Breda, and Ansel de Breda manufacturing capability will be under the control of Casado in the future as part of the PMI. So we will be putting in Japanese quality standards, Japanese QA people, Casado processes into uh, Ansel de Breda. And I'm sure when we deliver uh, Ansel de Breda products in the future to Hitachi quality standards, this again will increase our opportunities for further expansion of the business internationally. Excuse me, question. With regards to uh, production capacity, um, maybe this is more so much in UK, but in the first project, the production site and employment uh, was more on the government side, so you had a better condition, terms and conditions, but in the second project, the manufacturing side had already had hired people, so often uh, your situation is will worsen. So would the same risk occur again in UK? I mean, aren't you not concerned about that? And the question about the first contract and the second contract, uh, what, what do you uh, mean? Which contracts? Uh, Fend some government uh, inviting the, uh, the rolling stock manufacturers, uh, providing the some uh, the good condition for the first business. Uh, with battery, the condition is requiring to uh, local production uh, and hiring the, some employment. And the, after that, the, the company has already factory, uh, have to keeping the utilization ratio. Uh, so from the second project, uh, the government is requiring a more tough condition uh, because the manufacturer is difficult to uh, the withdraw from the country once they have already have the issue. 
So hope to double check. Are uh, there any risk uh, for the UK project or not? Okay, right. Uh, interesting question. In my experience, that's not the case at all. Um, our first contract in the UK was the Class 395, uh, where the terms and conditions were tough because um, in UK they had no experience of Hitachi technology. Um, again, for the Intercity Express program, the terms and conditions were tough uh, because it was an international competition for who was going to win that, uh, that contract. Um, we actually offered to uh, build a factory as part of our strategy. This was not a requirement for the government because we need the capacity. Um, so I think having a factory in the United Kingdom is extremely helpful for our business going forward, which I think has already been demonstrated in winning the new contract for commuter trains in Scotland. So we see Newton Aycliffe is very busy, will be very busy for the first two or three years. And there's a lot of opportunity for, uh, for new contracts uh, for Newton Aycliffe. So I actually th I see it as a strength rather than a threat uh, to our business going forward. And f just a final point to add, because um, we don't have overcapacity in our, uh, in our business um, compared to some of our rivals have a lot of overcapacity. We don't have that. And I think we have the opportunity for further expansion in the future, particularly in developing markets. So with that, we would like to close our presentation on our real business, real systems business. Thank you.